Hello everyone. This is section 1.8 velocity or excuse me acceleration and velocity models and recall rectilinear motion uh, motion in a straight line and um, we'll use x of t if it's horizontal v of t of, or excuse me y of t if it's vertical um, but we're talking about one dimensional and we had discussed before how starting with the position you can obtain the velocity which is the derivative of the position and the acceleration which is the derivative of the velocity or the second derivative of the position with respect to time or working backwards if you start with acceleration you can integrate to find the velocity and consequently integrate the velocity to find the position so here's an example where we want to consider the acceleration to be equal to the time rate of change of the velocity because it states that the acceleration is proportional to the difference between 280 feet per second and the rocket's velocity so we're trying to relate the acceleration to the velocity so therefore we can write the mathematical model that the time rate of change of the velocity dv dt which is the acceleration is equal to well it's proportional to the difference between 280 and the object's velocity so then we could write the equation that dv dt is equal to k times 280 minus v where k is some constant now we're given that the object is initially at rest so at t equaling zero the velocity is zero and also that the initial acceleration which is dv dt is 210 and so it says how long will it take for so these are all the givens and what we want is how long it will take to accelerate to a velocity so t is question mark when the velocity is 224 feet per second and so in this particular case starting with the equation dv dt equals k times 280 minus v in general we could actually find the constant k because the velocity is zero and the initial acceleration which is dv dt is 210 so we could say 210 is equal to k times 280 minus zero or just 280 so therefore k is 210 over 280 and if we divide that out it comes out neatly to 0.75 so then we could write the general equation that the time rate of change of the velocity is now the 0.75 times 280 minus the velocity and at that point we could separate the variables so you could write dv equals 0.75 write it in differential form here and then separate the variables by dividing by the 280 minus v over 
ambiguity minus V is equal to 0 0.75 dt. And now we'll integrate both sides. Now on the left hand side, so I'll just throw the integral symbol in front of the, each side. On the left hand side, just make sure that you understand you should be able to do this mentally. But if I'm integrating dv over 280 minus v, I actually need a u substitution to fit the form of du over u. Take u to be the denominator, 280 minus v. We get du is minus dv, so minus du is dv. So this becomes minus the integral of du over u, which would be minus the natural log of that denominator. It's a plus a constant if you want formally, but we'll introduce that on the right hand side. So the point of that being that that negative sign comes into play. So minus natural log of the quantity 280 minus V is equal to, then here integrating we get 0.75T plus, since we introduced a natural log on the left, I'm going to call this the natural log, but I'm going to call it C1 because I want to clear this negative to try to solve for V. So multiplying by a negative, we get the natural log of 280 minus V equals a negative 0.75T. And now I'll say just plus the natural log of some constant C. And then we Eulerize. So remember E to, as the base of each side you want to show it explicitly. We've shown this many times in the past, so this step certainly you can skip. So now we get the 280 minus V is equal to, and then this becomes, as we've shown many times in the past, C e to the negative 0.75t. Okay, and so then to solve for V, we consider bringing V to the right and the C to the left. I'm switching them around. V would be 280 minus C E to the negative 0.75T. Okay, so now we need to solve for the constant, and that's based on the initial condition, of course. And the initial condition... was that at t equaling zero, the velocity is zero. So then that gives us zero equals 280 minus c. So c is 280. So then we get our velocity function 280 minus 280 e to the negative 0.75t. And so now we need to know t is question mark. When the velocity is 224. And so just set the velocity to 224 is 280 minus 280 e to the negative 0.75t, and then we solve for t. And we've seen this many times before as well. Um, to solve for t, we first transpose this 280. So 224 minus 280 is negative 56. Then we're going to divide by the negative 280, that's the coefficient here, of E. So that isolates E, and to undo E, we'll take the natural log. 
and now we just need to divide all of that by the negative 0 0.75 and that will give us our value of t and so to the nearest I need to take this to the thousandth 2.146 seconds okay so that's that example and now we introduce air resistance and the theory behind air resistance is that we have vertical motion now we'll consider with air resistance and we will consider a little sketch of the situation so assume we have a mass make a little figure over here um, so we've got some mass and it's falling due to gravity so we've got a force due to gravity so F sub G and then there's some air resistance so that's going to be an upward force if it's falling we'll call that F sub bar so the total force is going to be the sum of the forces if you consider the mass and the total force because the force of gravity is going to be greater than the resistive force then the total force, call it F sub T, is going to be the sum of the resistive force plus the force due to gravity. Um, and that resistive force, the force due to gravity is just minus mg, so that's going downward. The resistive force is proportional to the velocity. So we could say that F sub R is proportional to the velocity and it would follow that the resistive force is equal to we're going to take it to be negative k times the velocity where k is a positive because then if the velocity is negative that is it's falling downward then the resistive force would be positive that would mean that it's upward by taking it to be negative k v but if the velocity were positive it would be rising then the resistive force would be negative because it was going in the opposite direction um, so then that would imply that the total force is going to be the resistive force negative kV plus the force due to gravity which is negative mg and then we have Newton's law and we know by Newton's law that force equals mass times acceleration or we could say mass times the time rate of change of velocity because what we're trying to do here is relate velocity to acceleration like in our first example and then that would give us that if we call this the total force then we could state that m dv dt is equal to that total force which was the minus kv minus mg and then if we divide everything by m we would have that dv dt equals negative k over m times v minus g so then what we do is just consider at this time rate of change of velocity is going to be negative we'll call it rho v 
minus g. And then we'll state that this is where rho is equal to k over n. So this is our main formula for air resistance. So in this example, there actually is no uh, gravity because it's a motorboat moving at 40 feet per second um, and the motor quits and then t 10 seconds later it's slowed to 20 feet per second so if you wanted to sketch the situation the initial velocity um, this at time zero, so V of zero, if you like, is 40. And if you want units, feet per second. And it slows down to, after 10 seconds, so V of 10 is 20 feet per second. And... We assume the resistance it encounters is proportional um, to its velocity. So the resistance is proportional to the velocity, so it, it was the same as our assumption in the theory. Um, but what we have is then that the gravity is zero because we only have horizontal motion so there's no vertical motion and we basically just wanted all the distance okay so how far did it travel in other words x is question mark so we start with um, dvdt equaling just negative rho v And we don't know what rho is. That's basically going to be dictated by what happens in that interval as it slowed down. And so we can separate the variables here. So dv equals negative rho v dt and dividing by v with dv over v equals negative rho dt and at that point we can integrate so on the left we get the natural log of v equaling on the right rho is a constant so negative rho t plus call that the natural log of c because of the fact that we obtained a natural log on the left then Eulerizing so once again you don't need to show this step we're taking E to be the base of each side of the equation but then as we've seen many times that gives us V that's why we did it and then this gives us left hand side gives us c e to the negative rho t so the first initial condition that we could use is that at t equaling zero okay so this was t is zero here's t is ten so at t equaling zero the velocity is 40. So therefore, we could say that 40 equals C. Because we're putting a T of 0 in there. So then we get the velocity function is 40. E to the negative rho T. Uh, and to determine the value of rho, the final condition that the t equaling 10 
velocity was 20. So therefore 20 is equal to 40 e to the negative rho times 10. And then we're going to solve for rho. So as we've done many times, first divide by the 40 to isolate the e, we get 20 over 40. Undo the e by taking the natural log. Divide by the negative 10 to get our value of rho. And that crunches down to be 0 0.0. .0 693 so I'll retain three decimals there and so now we have our velocity function so now I'm going to call it v of t and that's 40 e to the negative 0 0.0693 times t but we need to know the position so how, how far did it travel so that's um, x of t. So bringing it up here, we'll now say that x of t is the integral of v of t with respect to t. So x of t is the integral of what we just found, the 40e to the negative Zero point zero six nine three t with respect to t. Okay, so now when we integrate, this fits a form for e to the k t. So one over k, so forty over the negative zero point zero six nine three e to the negative zero point zero. 693t and then plus some constant of integration and that gives us if you divide out 40 over the negative 0 0.0693 you get negative 577.2 e to the negative 0 0.0 693t plus the constant. So then the initial condition is that t equals 0. We'll say x is 0. Okay, so that's the initial position. x is 0. Here's our final position x is question mark but it when t is 0 it wipes the e out and we get 0 um, equals the negative 577.2 plus c so c is 577.2 so therefore, x of t is the negative 577.2 e to the negative 0 0.0693 t plus 577.2. And so the, um, we want to know how far the boat coasts in total actually um, when I drew this diagram I guess I, I wasn't really paying attention because we want the distance that it coasts at this point it's still traveling you know and then at some point it's going to stop but we don't know what that point is so basically, we can consider that when it's going to stop will be found by taking the limit 
this thing goes on forever. So the limit is t of approaches infinity. And so if we take the limit as t approaches infinity of the negative 577.2 e to the negative 0 0.0693 t plus the 577.2, then the term containing e, e to the negative infinity, basically tends towards zero. And so we finally get 577.2, we call that v. Okay, and so then the final problem is a classic. Um, it's on a separate page in Blackboard. It's what I call the parachute problem. Um, and here's the example. Um, so we get somebody bailing out of an airplane, starting at 10,000 feet, falls for 20 seconds, opens the parachute. How long will it take to reach the ground? And we assume linear air resistance of rho v, so our theory, taking rho to be 0.15 without the parachute and 1.5 with the parachute. And then they gave us a little suggestion uh, to first determine the height above the ground and the velocity when we open the parachute. So because this solution is kind of cumbersome. I typed it up, or I actually hand wrote it, and this is the document that you would see if you print it. And we'll just run through um, the highlights. And so I drew a sketch of the situation here. Um, she's going to free fall for 20 seconds, then open the parachute, and then we want to know how long it took to hit the ground, so we'll find the second time. So it's kind of a two-part problem. First part's going to be free fall with an air resistance of 0.15. Then when she opens the chute, um, still free fall, but the air resistance is greater, 1.5. Um, and so... During the free, what I was calling the free fall um, portion, we start with the standard equation that dv dt is negative rho v minus g. Um, we're in the British system, so gravity is negative, negative thir gravity is 32 feet per second squared, so 32. Plug in the 0.15 for v. And here what I did was I factored out a negative 1 from this. And then I separated the variables. So that was kind of a unique approach that could or could not be used. But in any event, when integrating, we have to be careful here because we're making a U substitution. If U is this denominator, the DU is 0.15 dV. And we'd have to modify by 1 over 0.15, so that's where that comes from. And then we get the natural log of the denominator, integrating the right-hand side minus t, and we'll call it natural log of c1. So then I isolated the natural log by first multiplying by 0.15. I changed that to natural log of c. And then Eulerized and used our standard manipulations to obtain this equation. And then we're going to solve for the constant. So you could solve for v first, but I chose to solve for the constant using the initial condition. t is 0, v is 0. And they gave um, that c is 32. And so substituting here is our equation that we can now solve for v. So transpose the 32 here. That's where this negative 32 came from divided by the 0.15, that's where these 0.15s came from, and did the actual divisions, and there's our velocity function. So now that velocity function represents its vo the velocity over this freefall period. 
and what we'll do is we'll we need to find um, the distance that or the position function over that period so we have to integrate to find um, the position since the position is the time rate of change of the velocity um, we could say dy dt is the velocity or we could just say that y is the integral of the velocity so we basically integrated here's the velocity function integrating that again be careful with the e you get the modification by 1 over negative 0.15 and then integrating this constant term we get t so I just introduced it as C in terms of the constant of integration because we didn't end up with the natural log here. And then doing the division, here's our position function. Um, and then we use the initial condition at time zero, the height was 10,000, to find our constant of integration. So now here's our position function. So that's over the free fall. So now the chute opens. So when the chute opens, we need to know the initial velocity and the initial position. So these are the two functions, once again, our velocity function and our position function. And they open at 20 seconds. So we find V of 20. So let's plug in a 20 in for T here. And you find y of 20, so plug in a 20 in for t into the y. And those are the respective values. So now the new air resistance takes over. And we have our same equation. dv dt is negative rho v minus g. But now the rho is 1.5. Um, and I did the same thing in terms of integrating. I factored out a negative 1 separated the variables, integrated, again be careful with the 1 over 1.5 upon our u substitution, and then we're going to solve this by first multiplying by the point, the 1.5. Uh, notice how I intro introduced natural log of c1, because we got a natural log over here, call that the natural log of c, and then Eulerized to undo the natural log and at that point I chose to we could have solved for the velocity uh, but I chose to solve for the constant C by using the initial conditions and now it's a new time that I'm calling T sub 1 equaling 0 so that's the point where they open the parachute the velocity we had found was the negative um, 202.71 and this was our position when they opened the parachute so that was the initial velocity and we substitute that to find the constant and so substituting the constant in to this equation we then solve for the velocity so here's our new velocity function over the period of time where the chute was open. And now we need to find the position function, so we'll integrate that. And integrating, um, call it dy dt, integrate to get y. Again, be careful of the minus 1.5 with the 1 over k idea when we integrate e to the kt. This constant integrates to be. Um, negative 21.33 t at a constant of integration and there is our new position function as the, when the chute is open and we use the initial conditions here where again it was what I'm calling t sub 1 equaling 0 so up here in the, in the sketch if you wanted this is t sub 1 equaling 0 it's kind of like a second part to it. This was the new height. Um, and that solves for a constant. 
So finally, we get the ultimate position function. And what we want to know, so this is the position function during the time the parachute was open. And what we want to know is what is the time to take to hit the ground, so when y is 0. So we just set this equal to 0. And now this is an equation that we can't solve algebraically. So you have to either use technology or, you know, back in the old days when we didn't have technology, the Newton's method, which was kind of tedious, but um, that would be a way to find the solution to this equation that is not a standard equation because it's linear at the same time it's exponential. So you can't solve this algebraically. So using technology, just plug it into a graphing calculator, look for the zero, and there's the time it takes. Um, and then you can find the velocity at that time and convert it to um, miles per hour. So the total time was the uh, 20 seconds plus this was the time for the while the parachute was open. So 20 seconds plus that is the total time. And the velocity that we found um, was the velocity using the velocity function here while the parachute was open. Here we converted that to miles per hour. So um, that's the speed at which uh, they hit the ground. Okay, so looks really difficult, but it was really just a couple of integrations. So you can um, consider that a classic example. All right, so that ends 1.8. And that's actually the end of the material for exam one.